I deeply regret that owing to a prior engagement, I am once again unable to attend the annual speech day. However, I have pleasure in enclosing a small donation towards the restoration of the cricket pavilion. Best wishes. Mm. Remind me to write a cheque. How much? Oh, the usual five guineas. <laughs> now, what is amusing, John? It's uh, not much towards corrupting a new generation. You're quite right. Make it ten, Drusilla. Oxfam would feed a hundred children for a month of that. But it wouldn't teach them to play cricket. Oh, this is very interesting. Oh, is that the letter from the Prince Line? With a ticket for a free trip to Cape Town. Why? Well, it says they want to introduce the Hibernian Prince to a wider section of the public. The Hibernian Prince has been trolling back and forth between England and South Africa since Cecil Rhodes was a cabin boy. Publicity stunt. They're inviting men of influence from all walks of life. Ooh. Must be the wrong address. Of course, you can't accept. Of course, we must get on with the memoir. Yes. So perhaps you'll be good enough to telephone Chief Publicity Officer Arnold Beale, tender my apologies, and tell him that the sailing date conflicts with my old school speech day. Where are you going? The Green Fly. Wait for no man. Oh, could I have London, please? City, one line, two minutes. Could I speak to Mr. Arnold Beale, please? Beale, yes. B-Baker, E-E-V-A-A-L-L-N-O-N. He's the Chief Publicity Officer. Um, thank you, Drusilla. Thanks them kindly. Would you hold on a moment, please? Arnold Beale doesn't exist. Intriguing. But the ticket's real. It can't be a hoax. It isn't. It's a mystery. They say they haven't got anyone called Beale. I know. I heard. But it doesn't make sense. Someone, for some reason, wants me aboard that ship. You're not going, are you? What about the book? Do you think the sea air might give me inspiration? You're walking into a setup. I suppose I should have to pay for you, Drusilla. I have always wanted to see South Africa. Yes, you would. Mm, what am I going to do about you? What, me with my touch of the tar brush? Get me the chairman of the Prince Line. I'll come in. Hmm? Hello? Oh, could I have Sir William Temple, please? For Mr. Charles Rose. What are you up to? A few days before the mass, John. You're joking. A valuable experience for any young man. Uh, Sir William. Ah, uh, hello, Scruggy. How are you? Yes, are you going to the old school speech day? Alas, no, not this year. Did you? Five guineas. Oh, I sent them ten this time. All visitors ashore. Will all visitors please leave the ship now? Will passengers who have not yet checked the purses of this please do so immediately? I'm old-fashioned enough to like plenty of mahogany. Just as I like to see these splendid chaps with their brass buttons. Well, I suppose it creates an atmosphere. Good heaven. Bisho! Oh, <laughs> <my> <laughs> well, I, what are you doing here? I was going to ask you the same question. I heard of your retirement now. I have your shoe. Oh, you must introduce me to your charming niece. Uh, secretary. Monsieur Pichot, formerly of the Sûreté in this land. How do you do? Enchanté, mademoiselle, enchanté. I'm glad to see you are keeping so active in retirement, Charles. Uh, to need a secretary. I am writing my memoir. Oh, you must find it very interesting, Miss Lamb. Yes, I'm sure it will be when we make a start. We've shared so many cases. I'll be sharing one now. Oh, oh pardon. Charles, you will never guess with whom I travelled down from Waterloo. Your niece? Captain Quinn Quinn. You don't mean Eddie Quinn. Late of the New York City Police. Where is he? He said he would be in the bar. But of course. Uh, shall we? <laughs> Attention, please. Attention, please. Will all passengers with valuables to deposit please take them now to the person office on me? I repeat. Will all passengers with valuables to deposit please take them now to the person office on me? Thank you.
The Canterbury Diamonds. They're wonderful, sir. Absolutely wonderful. I've heard about them, Mr. Kuiper, of course, but I, I never dared hope that I'd see them. The family treasure. I read they're worth over a million pounds, is that right? Or oh, roughly, sir, would you say? Well, they would insure for that at the exhibition, but it's impossible to put a value on them. They're, they're unique. Of course, sir. Well, perhaps you'd like to bring them along to the strong room. I'm sure you'd like to put them away yourself. Yes, of course. All right, sir. Master of Dimes. Yes, sir. You come this way, sir. Thank you. I'm sure you'll find they're safe enough in here, sir. It all looks very impressive. Now, this grill is lowered and locked in position after each deposit is completed. I see. Well, it looks strong enough. Well, it's only raised twice on every voyage just to allow passengers access to their boxes. And the master and ours and myself are always present when it's up. There you are, sir. There's your box. 105. So there's uh, no chance of anyone opening the wrong box? Oh, good heavens, sir. No, no chance at all. Well, it's a relief to know they're safe at last. I shan't have to worry about them anymore. Safer, if I may say so, sir, than the Bank of England. So this is the strong room. Yeah. Do you wish to deposit something, sir? Oh, only this. Well, perhaps you can step into my office. Anywhere you like. Excuse me, I'll be back in a moment, sir. As the... as the merest formality, sir, may I ask what it is? Family heirlooms, or what's left of them. I see. Well, in that case, I'll allocate you a safe deposit, Mr... Uh... Varney, Hugo Varney. Varney. There we are. Box seven, sir. Thank you. Tell me, um... Isn't that Paul Kuiper in there, the fellow who owns a diamond mine? His father does, sir. Oh, well, nice to have one in the family, anyway. <laughs> uh, which box did you say? Uh, box seven, sir. Uh, what happens if I, um, lose this key? Well, I assure you, that's not likely to happen, sir. But even if you did, we can always obtain a duplicate. Straight away? I beg your pardon? Uh, you have a, a duplicate to hand, as it were. <laughs> as it were. Oh, well, that's all right, then. In fact, the duplicate is right here in my own safe, sir. Thank you, Purser. That is most reassuring. Thank you, sir. So, I, I get this invitation, and I say to myself, Ed boy, this is the way it's going to be from now on. It's either this or the lecture tour. <laughs> <laughs> What's the joke? Well, it's your American naivety. When I got this letter, I said to myself, why me? Who is this Arnold Beale? Charles, you did the same, but you, you think it is for real. <laughs> Look, I'm retired, huh? Mm. I'm on a European vacation. Plenty of people know this. Oh, he's a very famous man, you know. <laughs> Honey, how was I to know the invitation was a fake? Well, of course, in a sense, it wasn't. I mean, the ticket was real. So now we wait for Mr. Beale to reveal himself. Well, perhaps he won't. Perhaps he isn't even here. Oh, Mr. Lamb, it has cost Mr. Beale a great deal of money to arrange this gathering. We are here for some purpose. I agree the policeman's outings rarely venture as far as Cape Town. Brief but beery is the accepted formula. <laughs> <laughs> I think we can dismiss the idea of an anonymous benefactor. This is not a policeman's outing. Well, somebody could have it in for us. You should try to think pleasant thoughts, Eddie. Well, somebody with a grudge, there must be plenty of them around. Oh, settling of old scores? Then it will have to be a criminal all three of us knew. Yeah, or just some crazy cop, Eddie. What do you think, Charles? I think we must wait and see. After we're too late then, Charlie. You have a lurid mind, Eddie. Excuse me a moment, will you? It's a pity that you weren't able to associate with a better class of criminal. Charlie, we had high-class crime all over New York. <laughs> What was your friend's name, sir? Perhaps I could help you. Oh, I'm afraid it's one of those names that are easier to read than to pronounce. Sir. Huh. Rosenkovitz? I beg your pardon. The cabin next to my strong room was booked by a Mr. Rosenkovitz. Uh, no. Uh, perhaps, my friend, it seems he's not on board. Perhaps he's traveling on the Queen Mary. Yeah, but the Mary doesn't touch Cape Town, sir. Yes, that's what makes it so confusing. <laughs> <laughs> Stuart? Yes, sir? You, um, you don't happen to know who that delightful young lady is, do you? Oh, that's Miss Lamb, sir. Travelling alone, or does she have a shepherd? She's with a gentleman by the name of Rose. His, uh, secretary. You are a mine of information, Stuart. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Very religious people, the Sicilians. They, they've got to be, because they never know when they're going to go. <laughs> you get it, Jules? Oh, I was watching that young man at the bar. Oh, don't look now. 
Ah, uh, what about him? That's his first double risky since you came in. I don't law against that. His name is Paul Kaiper. Oh, you know him? His picture was in the Paris papers recently. His family own a diamond mine. Of course, the Candubari collection. Yes. Oh, they're supposed to be fabulous. They've just been on show at that exhibition in London. Well, what's so special about them? Their size and color, and the fact that there are 35 of them. <laughs> well, that's a lot of rock, huh? It's only the second time they've ever been on show. And the first time outside South Africa. Oh, what's the matter, that them diamond misers or something? <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. It all started with your great-grandfather, the old prospector who discovered Candubari. He found three huge diamonds on three successive days and swore never to sell any of them till he had 50 of the same size. Of course, he never got them. But ever since then, the family have been trying to keep his promise. It's a kind of tradition with them. Oh, I beg your pardon, then. I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> It's a bit choppy out there, eh? Yeah, it's almost like a motorboat. <laughs> it's going to be a storm tonight. A storm. big storm round the old ship tonight. Mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, the glass is falling. Look. Oh, 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 Miss Lamb? Yes? I'm so sorry about that. Is he a friend of yours? <laughs> Anybody with a diamond mine in the family is at least a potential friend. Please let me get you another drink. Uh, no, thank you. Mr... Varney. Hugo Varney. He's, he's very young, you know, and the nervous strain of carrying a huge fortune in diamonds around in one's pocket. You, you don't mean to say that he's actually the Candobari diamonds? Oh, not now, no, no. They're locked away in the strong room now. He was carrying them. It's a reaction setting you. Good heavens. What? His safe deposit key. Really, he shouldn't be so careless. He must have dropped it when he fell against your table just now. Well, it's lucky you noticed it. Yes, I'd better return it to him straight away. Perhaps I may have the pleasure of buying you that drink later on this evening? Perhaps. Come in. Oh, it's you. you. Any idea how this damn thing fastened? No idea. You realize that attitude won't take you far in the merchant navy? Well, I wouldn't let you disappoint your friend Scroggy, but that's fine by me. The man who designed this must have had the sketchiest notions of anatomy. Are you here for some reason? Yes. We've got the Kandabari diamonds on board. Who says so? The crew. Engine room gossip. Paul Kuiper took them to the purser's office. The audacity of the man. The what? Can't hope to get away with it, surely. Here, do something constructive with that. We should tell him he's here. Ah, oh, there you are. Come with me. Where to? I want you to witness what the politicians call a confrontation. Gentlemen, let me introduce someone you'll both be sorry to meet again. Oh, hiding behind that newspaper is the biggest rogue any of us have had the misfortune to meet. You recognize his face, it's on a thousand police files. Uh, what the devil, oh, my dear sir, I do beg your pardon. Damned I no idea with the captain about this. Are you feeling all right, Charles? Hello, Charles. Nice to see you still blundering along. Barney! Well, I'll be damned, huh? The limey jewelsy. Captain Quinn. I heard you had a spot of bother with a commissioner after I left New York. Yeah, you're not just whistling Dixie, brother. And Commissaire Pichot. No hard feelings, I hope. What are you doing here, Barney? I heard you had retired. Retirement's so dull, don't you think? I've come back. I missed putting that fellow in prison by no more than a smudged fingerprint. We have all had that bitter experience. Hugo Barney. Candabari diamonds, huh? No, that's not coincidence. No more than our own presence on board is a coincidence. Barney has arranged a list so he can steal the Candabari diamonds in front of us. A challenge that we can hardly refuse. What incredible egoism. I you mean Arnold Beale is Hugo Vardy. Exactly. <laughs> Any 
extinct species. He looks healthy enough. Like the coelacanth, Hugo Varney is a relic of a vanished era. In the days when everybody dressed for dinner, there was an abundance of jewellery available for a fast man on a drain pipe. And he was good at drain pipes. Clever, agile, an expert safe breaker. Yes, he was very troublesome to us. Thank you all. Do you really think he'll have a go at those diamonds? The conclusion is inescapable. Thank yeah. you, Mr. Varney. Hugo. Hugo. Tell me, what do you do? For a living? Hmm? Oh, like your employer, I'm practically retired now. Well, what did you do? I'm sure it was something exciting. Sometimes, yes. See if I can guess. Explorer. Too open air. <laughs> Deep sea diver. <laughs> Too strenuous. Artist. You're getting warm. Ah, there's one thing about that guy. He's no fool. Nobody said he was. A fool would have been caught long ago. Well, Charlie Rose must think he's a fool. Hmm? Lafarney's a profession. He's gonna hoist those diamonds. The last thing he wants is a bunch of cops breathing down his neck. Normally, Eddie, I would agree with you. Yeah, so what's changed all of a sudden? The psychology. Look, Charlie says Barney's the joker who arranged this trip, right? Mm -hmm. Therefore, he says Barney's gonna knock off the Candabari diamonds, right? Mm -hmm. Screwball logic, not psychology. But Eddie, have you never heard of a death wish? You mean it's all some big subconscious deal just so he can get caught? My friend, why do people steal? For money. Not only. Their motives are mixed. They like the satisfaction, the excitement, and the feeling they have beaten authority. Yeah, they're hitting back at big old ugly daddy. Police school stuff. But don't you believe it? Jules, I got me more arrests than any other five detectives in New York. I never concerned myself about motivation. Just did they do it. But is he going to do it? It's a much more difficult question. You have to concern yourself with motive to answer that. I don't think so. He's not crazy. But vanity feeds on success. Exactly. Varney has begun to believe he is the Pope. What? The doctrine of infallibility. He wants to end his career on a note of trial. The spectacular coup. Stealing the Candobari diamonds would be a masterstroke in itself, but to snitch them from under the noses of three well-known, three eminent detectives. No, he'd never get away with it. Of course not, but he has convinced himself he can. Do we tell the captain? And lose the revenge of a lifetime? All we need to do is to watch him. Yeah, a 24-hour stakeout. I've always found it easier to keep my eye on the jam pot rather than the wasp. I got it. We watch both ends. First false move he makes, bam. All right. Jewel thief. Oh, really? You well, I said you wouldn't believe me. <laughs> Jewel thief. It sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? It's absurd. Well, it's a snob term, anyway. I stole heaps of things apart from jewellery. Oh, well, naturally, one does understand. I mean, money and so on. Money, decent ornaments, mm -hmm. even cutlery. Oh, no, not cutlery. Depending on the hallmark, of course. Oh, of course. <laughs> well, hello. I've been trying to guess his job. And what does it say in his passport? Independent means. Ah. And how are you described, Charles? Oh, you know each other. Oh, intimately, yeah. It's still a police officer. I must get a change sometime. Yes, you should. Well, have a jolly evening, Drusilla. Is something wrong? No. He was only being nice. A real charmer. How did you meet him? He came to apologize for Paul Kuiper, that's Ap all. Apologize? Ah, uh, Kuiper got loaded. And Varney was there. Well, it's just as well he was, or that key might have been lost for good, thrown into the bilges or something. Do they have dustbins on the ship? What key, Drusilla? The one Paul Kuiper dropped to his safe deposit. Morning, sir. Morning. Ship's paper. Oh, thank you. Anything good at Kempton today? Don't follow it, sir. Oh, I thought they named the steward's cup after you chaps. Oh. Been at sea long? Not long, sir. Excuse me. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Varney. Sleep well? Mr. Varney, I have only a jade bracelet and a single string of cultured pearls, so I'm afraid you're wasting your time. Someone has been poisoning your mind. You are a thief. Well, I told you. You're unscrupulous, dishonest, conceited. Charming, intelligent, amusing. You've no sense of shame. Now, what have I done that's shameful? 
You've robbed. Only the rich. For whose benefit? Everyone's. Money has to circulate. It's essential for a healthy economy. You can't argue your way out of it. You are a parasite. Great fleas have little fleas. Just a few notes I made following our discussion last night. <clears throat> Summarize them for a shul. Oh, very well. Notorious jewel thief. Candlebury diamonds. Presumption of intended larceny. Ah, yes. The timing. I have divided this into the field of danger and the zone of maximum risk. You know what I think, Charlie? I think we should go search his cabin. Illegal entry. Who's gonna know? Your girl can keep him talking. Shall I go on? I thought you'd finish. I was presenting a reasoned argument. Ah, oh, come on. Let's go search the cabin first. What do you hope to find? Maybe the key. Oh, he told me Slammy would return it to poor Kappa straight away. I'm sure he did. Ah, oh, come on. Since to keep it would arouse suspicion, and poor Kappa seems untroubled by any sense of loss. What do you think, Charles? One's mind boggles at the improbability of the entire incident. <laughs> a man with the key to a fortune drops it at the feet of the man, planning to rob him. At Dursella's feet, to be accurate. It's not improbable when you consider that Varney would have been watching Kappa from the very moment they came on board. He saw the key dropped. It was a golden opportunity, but he could not retrieve it without your secretary seeing him. So he makes like a boy scout and hands it back. I'm sorry to butt in, gentlemen, but I think I left my cigarette case here somewhere. Oh, no, don't bother to get up, Jules. I, I see it. It's rather a favorite of mine. Awfully attractive, don't you think? Uh-huh. Cartier, sir. You recognize it? But doubtless somebody would. It's not gel ignite. Do you always carry plasticine in your cigarette case? Always, yeah. Makes it a mess in one's pocket. Thank you. Uh, you can stick a detonator with plasticine. Or take impressions of keys with it. Okay, fellas, let's go, huh? Well, the cap. Priscilla, where's your compassion for the penitent sinner? You've never felt a moment's pity for your victims. <laughs> My victims, as you call them, have never suffered, not even financially. They've all been insured. Well, then the insurance companies have suffered. I am, a, I'm essential to them. I mean, they go out of business, there were no burglars. And what about your nice Mr. Rose? I kept him in employment for years. was your idea. You rush in, Jules and I will be in, Jules. You're so smart, Charlie. I shall station myself at the foot of the companionway. When I see Varney approaching, I shall whistle. What? The overture to William Tell. Duty? Uh, I was just examining um, the the grain of this uh, African rosewood. Well, don't bother to knock, Charles. There's no one at home. Uh, how how did you get down here? In the lift. How? Why? Where's my secretary? Waiting for me. I hope we're going to have a dip before lunch. Avani, I must warn you that Rusilla is very precious to me. And to me too, Charles. I assure you. Her shorthand speed is 160. And virtuous with it. Do you know, if I'd met somebody like Drusilla 20 years ago, my whole career might have been ruined.
swimming togs. best I've seen. He's certainly good at his job. Yeah, we got him this time, huh? Possession of an implement, larcenous intent. We have no power of arrest. That's right, Johnny. Let us go and see the purser, shall we? Right. Jimmy, this is really rather serious, gentlemen. Look, you've got all the proof you need right there. Well, I can't be sure this is a copy of Mr. Kuyper's key, at least not without comparing them. If you have a duplicate, you can compare it with that. Oh, no, 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 no. No, gentlemen. I suggest that we go to the heart of the matter. Come with me. <coughs> Mr. Kuiper, sir. Hmm? Excuse me, sir. Have you, uh, have you got your key, sir? Key? What key, eh? Your safe deposit key. I'm sorry to bother you, sir. Oh, why? Well, these gentlemen seem to think it may have been duplicated. What? How? Well, there you are, I see. They're entirely different. Now, let me see. Have a look. Ah, Purser. Purser, just the man I wanted. I'm afraid it's happened. Well, what's happened, sir? That key of mine disappeared. Huh? I went to the most extraordinary lengths to keep it safe, too. Stuck it in a bar of soap. Lost the lot. How do you explain that? Game and first set. I wonder if you could let me have another one. I'm sorry to be such a nuisance. You're not being a nuisance, Mr. Varney. Not you, sir. What was all that about? Perhaps I should explain. Uh, perhaps I should first. I beg your pardon. I wasn't going to tell you, but uh, I invited you three aboard. What? I sent you tickets under the name of Arnold Beale. <clears throat> trying to find out where we are. I know precisely where we are. So do I. And we shall be in Cape Town at 7.30 in the morning. Slightly earlier, unless we reduce speed by two knots, we shall pass the harbour bar at 6.40. Oh, well, no one's going to be up in time to contradict you. The fancy dressing will be going on all night. Uh, the climax to a perfect trip. It has been fun, hasn't it? Yes, and I think tonight might be even more so. Come in. Charles, I'm not disturbing you. Oh, no, no, not at all. It's very hot in here. Hmm? Appalling. Charles, <clears throat> I want your opinion. Oh, even in this heat, there is nothing that I like better than expressing an opinion. It concerns Mr. Rosenkiewicz. Uh, the hermit of P-Deck. You caught a glimpse of him. Congratulations. I have discovered he does not exist. At least he is not on board. Which means that the cabin next to the strong room is empty. And we have now entered the zone of maximum risk. And Varney booked that cabin under a false name. And we know he has the metal cutting equipment and he saw it. But we also know that he's never used it before. He's an artist, not a mechanic. He relies upon his sandpapered fingertips. Even Varney cannot open his steel bulkhead with his fingertips. Consider, my friend, the dead of night, the empty cabin, everybody dancing on deck, and all that lies between Varney and the Canterbury Diamonds. Is this? And how often do you find a criminal changing his modus operandi? It's like Picasso suddenly painting a recognizable portrait. Charles, I promise you for a million pounds, even Picasso would paint a recognizable portrait. You drink, sir? Well, thank you very much. <coughs> Thanks. Thank you, sir. Have you brought one for Miss Lamb? Yes, sir. That's nine and ten altogether, sir. 
Then that should about cover it. Ten shillings, sir. Almost exactly. With Mr. Rose's compliments. Thank you. He be. Just you watch somebody doesn't drop a fag end in there. You're a bit exposed. If he should saw through the bulkhead, the real problem is, how is he going to get the diamonds off the ship? Ah, this guy's clever, Charlie. Well, once they're missed, even a fly wouldn't get down their gangway. The only sort of chance is to get rid of them before they are missed. Yes, and this is something that I haven't thought of. But that's impossible, I think, of everything. He could hide them someplace. Six months' time, a year, another guy comes aboard and... Oh, the customs have trained men. They would tear the ship to pieces, my friend. And eager treasure hunters would swarm through these shafts. Uh, what is this piece of apparatus? A ventilator. Why? And my cabin is immediately below, so this is mine. Look, and some fools blocked it up. What an absurd place to leave one's laundry. Uh, Charlie, let me see if I can help you. Uh, oh, a parachute. Obviously, I'm the only person present to have served his king and country. Speaking as a Republican, I... And is therefore able to recognize a survival dinghy. Yes, I will. Of the type that automatically inflates when it hits the sea. Ah. Oh. And I understand that the latest models incorporate an automatic radio beacon. And that's your ventilator. So he must have meant you to find it. It's very difficult to tell one red herring from another. Vardy knew what that would do to the ventilation of my cabin. Yes. This is the night of the long knives. He must be taught a lesson. There is. Well, I invited him on this trip. What? What do you know? Famous detectives. You flatter us. I thought they'd scared off any possible attempt. My family go crazy if the diamonds are stolen. I do understand, sir. So should I. I must do everything I possibly can. Just do what we say. Look, let's get this straight. I checked they were there this morning. Ah, the danger is tonight. Check it there now. Then you want me to go away, forget all about them while you hide in the strong room. My two colleagues will hide in the strong room. What will you be doing? I shall prowl the poop deck and other places. Well, if I may... Uh, Can't you just arrest him? On what grounds? Well, you've told me he's a notorious jewel thief. But if I may... Look, we've got to catch him with his mitts in the safety deposit box. No, I don't like it. Oh, we shall be there waiting for him. Oh, may I make a... You know what those diamonds mean to my family? I can't have them used as, as baits. Yes, no, I, I can't allow it. May I suggest... May I suggest a solution that will satisfy us all? What's that? If Varney believes the diamonds are in that strong room, we'll come and put his mitts into that box. No, I can't allow it. But before they are... You will have moved the swag to a place of greater safety. <laughs> Haven't seen Charles yet. Well, perhaps we won't recognize him. Oh, what's he coming at? I don't know, but he's sure to be original. <laughs> Excuse me. Do you mind? Yeah. Right after you, Mr. Kyber. Yes, sir. I'm very grateful, Professor. Nobody will know they're here. Only us. And my two colleagues. Well, obviously they won't tell, sir. They certainly won't. Well, that's it then. Well, are you happy now, gentlemen? On with the ball. <laughs> Can I help you, sir? I'm so sorry. Wrong cabin. It was Varney. 
Yes. Well, he knows they're here. He does now. Well, what are we going to do? Well, shall I tell your two I'll colleagues? Leave uh, them to me. I demand you put a guard on this safe. I agree. And leave that to me too. Ah, he's got a nerve, all right. He always had. I, I wouldn't go over the side of a ship in a dinghy. Do you think he means to? Well, that act with the sex today, he wasn't fooling. He's got no which way to travel. Oh, there is a better method. Oh, what's that? He tapes the diamonds to the dinghy, drops it overboard at a prearranged spot, the dinghy inflates itself, the radio goes bleep bleep. Yeah, and another guy comes along with a fishing pole. And, and voila! Yeah, that makes sense. Yes. Listen, why, why worry about something that ain't gonna happen? He can't do it. We're here. <sighs> what imagination, Charles? I adore Fred's dress. Places. You know where Varney is? Dancing with the Queen of Egypt. You're not, you're not still worrying. Of course I am. Don't. Now you're right. I think I've done everything I possibly can. has organized an accident. Oh, you think we should go see? No, oh, this is his chance. We must stay here. Oh, please, 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 please. No need to panic. I'm sorry, but would you all please get to your feet? But nobody's to leave for the time being. I'm sorry for any inconvenience now. Now, where is he now? Where? Now, there he is. Now, all right, everybody else outside, please. Everybody outside, just go back to the dance. There's nothing to the ballroom. I'm sorry for any inconvenience. I'm not surprised. You never are. 
You're missing the fun. There we are, sir. <laughs> Safe and sound. Thank you, Purser. No, I had to be sure. Well, of course. Of course you did. It's only natural. You must feel a, bit, a little bit relieved, as indeed I do. Hey, what do you call this, then? They're gone! What? Well, that's impossible. Well, damage you can see for yourself. How could they possibly have disappeared just like that? Well, you took them when the lights were out while you were blooding about in the dark. Now, take it easy, Mrs. Kyle. Take it easy, Mrs. Kyle. Every inch of this please. ship will have him in well, arms. Mind taking the wrong. Captain. It's all right, we will. Barney, where are my diamonds? Mislaid them, have you? Look, search his cabin. There must be somewhere. There's no need to start tearing the ship apart. Well, if you can find them, Mr. Rose, you're cleverer than he is, and I haven't seen much sign of that yet. I shall start to be clever now. Well, I should hope so. I remember at the old Hackney Empire, it was the custom at this point to call for a volunteer from the audience. Here, Governor. Thank you, sir. This is not the time for jokes, Mr. Rose. A riddle, then. Who is the one man who could get off this ship with the diamonds? The one man who would not be searched. All right, but who is it? Would you care to search Mr. Kuiper's pockets? The switch trick. On the way from one safe to the other. Exactly. Purser, I protest. All right, now, oh, take, this it easy, take, a moment. Take, take it easy, now. Well, you want to... <laughs> Right, there we are, Governor. Hmm. Perhaps you'd better put them in the safe this time, don't you think? Well, perhaps I had, sir. <laughs> Thank you, sir. And the whole thing was one big, gigantic setup, huh? It was quite a plan to return to Europe, sell the diamonds. I believe he had some rather substantial debts to settle. Well, then Hugo didn't do anything wrong at all. He had committed no known crime. He was I'm just sorry to say. He just a decoy. Yes, and a bit of necessary one. If the plan had worked, Varney would have taken all the credit. And yeah, we'd have all been sent right up the creek. Hmm? Attention, Will passengers disembark? Excuse me, sir. Please report now. Charles, what made you so sure Kaipa had worked this switch? Someday I must explain the deductive process by which I arrived at that conclusion. Oh, why'd you leave us in the dark, Charlie? I think we'd better go down to the purser. After all, we're going ashore today. Oh, yes, Charlie, you never told us why I'm I never understood that, Charlie. Oh, yes, Are you coming down? In a moment. Drusilla, your single string of pearls. What about them? I would like you to accept these as a memento. They're beautiful. Hugo, they're not... What? Stolen. You don't mind my asking? No, of course I don't mind your asking. 